So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through taking a digital scan from mesh to a model. And so what I'm saying here is I'm going to call it getting your scan from a digital theory to a physical reality. What you see in the background of this screen is actually STL in action. It's the standard tessellation language or the triangles or geometric shapes to create a visual, visual rendering of our three-dimensional product. So what are the objectives of this tutorial? The objectives are that you should maybe get a little bit of basics on how to export a scan from your chair side scanner, CIRAC software 4.5 or later, um, and exactly kind of how we're going to export these. Are we gonna export them to the in-lab software? Or are we going to export them to something like Blue Sky Ortho? So I can talk through a little bit on how to actually export, and then we're really gonna delve into the import functions and look at a few key criteria. How do we trim the model? How do we hollow the model? And how do we optimize for vertical print to save printer space? So first we're gonna start with CIRAC software. Now, the nice thing that we can do with CIRAC software is we have a couple different options available to us in the military that aren't always available, available to you in private practice. If you see, we have the ability to open CIRAC Ortho software, and that is part of our CIRAC sustainment software package. This CIRAC Ortho software version 1.2 is great for full arch scannings if we don't have CIRAC version 5.0 available. A lot of our laptops and computers that we use um, in the civilian world are already upgraded to Windows 10. The problem within government systems is there's a lot of security updates and it has to go through a rigorous software approval process and we haven't reached that point with our CAD CAM machines where we can update them to Windows 10 at this time. So a lot of our machines are still running software version 4.6. Now you can use this software version 4.6 to scan a full arch quickly, but understand that you may have 150 to 200 microns of cross arch discrepancy, which could affect the fit of your removable prosthetic device. So usually what I say is if it's going to be a mouth guard or a bleaching tray, and you wanna scan in a physical model very quickly, use the software version 4.6 for something like a bleaching tray or something like uh, an athletic mouth guard. Uh, but usually if you're scanning a full arch uh, and you want something that's rigid, something like a prosomnus device, we're gonna wanna go with CIRAC Ortho software or a chair side software that's greater than version 5.0. So instead of showing you a video of the actual scanning process, we're gonna go ahead and take a couple models that I scanned in myself. We're gonna check our upper and lower models. We're going to trim them and verify that all of our excess is removed, verify that we remove the lip and the tongue. And this screenshot that you see is actually the CIRAC Ortho software. These models are excellent models that are of export quality. And we're gonna move on to the next screen. This part is very, very important. This is our setting of our model axis. What you can see in the screen is this is for a prosomnus device with a protrusive record and a five millimeter opening. But even if you have a maximum intercuspation record, the most important thing here is your STL model will contain global positioning data that will um, orient your models to a virtual uh, horizontal plane. So making sure that we mount our models correctly in this screen will give us the easiest import into the next software that we have. Now, the nice thing about staying in the CIRAC world is you can export as a DXD, and that allows you to change your geometric um, three-dimensional position or your global positioning a little bit easier. When it comes to STL files and you start getting into Blue Sky Ortho and Blue Sky Planning software, this becomes even more critical. So I always recommend do not export until you have hit OK at the bottom of the screen. So you can see right here after setting model axis, once you click OK, then you can go up to the top and you can hit your export functions. Now in the ortho software, 
we don't have to do this step. Don't worry about aligning the teeth. Don't worry about marking the teeth. Go right to the add base step, but you don't actually have to add your base. So this is pretty neat. When you see, we go over the tutorial a little bit later of Blue Sky Ortho and adding our bases, we do have to go through and select our teeth, but we don't actually have to move them. So the Cirac Ortho export function is much easier and much faster from a digital scan getting into our in-lab program. So I can usually have a patient seated, have a full upper and full lower scan in about 15 minutes, and that's a long time, but if you think about all of the lab steps that it takes, it saves us a lot of time in the long run. Now with Prime Scan and with software version 5.1 and greater, we can get an upper and lower arch in about five to six minutes, um, ready to be exported for 3D printing. So the, the times are just getting faster. Now this screen right here is when we can go to the top and we can click Export. So there's two options that we want to choose. It's either as an STL or DXD. So if we look at the bottom of the screen, we see both options here. The first thing that we're going to go over is using the DXD function to go into our in-lab software. After that, we are going to talk about if you do take this out as a closed geometry or open geometry STL file, how do we handle that in the Blue Sky Plan orthodontic module to create the type of model that we want to print? So first, let's talk a little bit about file formats. So what do these file formats do? Well, what these file formats do is take this mesh and converts it into a series of usable data that you can export to different softwares. So DXD is a proprietary file system that's used by Serona. If you have a round margin, your margin stays round by using this DXD proprietary file system. It gives you a greater degree of accuracy when it comes to your articulation, your contact strength, and your marginal data. All of this information is maintained in your DXD software. RST, is very similar to a DXD, but it also create it also contains your restoration information if you're creating a restoration. So the really nice thing about DXD and RST is that if you do have an in-lab computer in your office, you can just thumb drive these over and import them directly into your in-lab software. If you don't have one, well then you have to use the Serona Connect portal. And I have some ghosted slides that I have available in this presentation that tell you how you can transfer these files over to the Army Dental Lab or how you could transfer them from one computer to another in the military system. But you can see that we have to do a lot of file conversions. So if we take something like a DXD or RST, which would be that cue ball up in this corner of the screen right here, we can convert it into what's called a 3SE file. So this is actually pretty neat. So Serona does give us the ability to transfer our DXD files over to these 3SE files. The problem with it is we still lose some data, things like contact strength and marginal integrity. So that margin that we worked so hard to draw and make a provisional is now gone. But if you want to just create, let's say, a set of clear aligners or you want to create a model for the Army Dental Lab, you could send it as a 3SE. The most common way, though, is to send it as what's called the STL file. The STL, or standard tessellation language, converts that round cue ball into a small series of triangles, which is what you actually see up here on the screen. This is the actual triangular pattern that's going to create our mesh. Now, this is just an artist's rendering of that three-dimensional shape, because right now, it's really just a theory. It's a, it's a set of binary ones and zeros that have a graphical user interface so we can see it on the computer screen. But it's important to know that these triangles can be bigger or smaller and it affects the resolution. Things like low, medium, or high. So if we want to use something for, let's say, a crown and bridge die, we may have to go with something like this. If we want to go with, let's just say, uh, an implant surgical guide, well, we may go with something like this. 
If we're making an athletic mouth guard or a bleaching tray, well, we probably don't need that high of a resolution of STL. We can probably go with something a little bit smaller. Typically, the medium and low resolution are able to be emailed via secure email due to their size of less than 25 megabytes. So as you can see, here's a little bit closer uh, view of these high, medium, and low resolution STLs. So it's really, really nice. Um, it gives us an opportunity to take our scans and transfer them amongst systems, but you have to understand that we lose things like contact strength. The only thing that comes over with the STL file is the global positioning data and intersections of the mesh, but it doesn't give you the actual contact strength or the intersection strength of the mesh, just the actual physical intersections. So this could result in restorations that are maybe a little bit higher than ideal, restorations that are out of occlusion, and we often see this when we transfer files from our um, DXD, transfer them to an STL file and have an outside laboratory make them. It usually messes with our occlusal information and our proximal contact strength. So we're going to skip over some of these ghosted files. How do we take it from our thumb drive to our computer? We're not going to go over this data. You can go ahead and feel free to read it on your own once we're all done. So now we're going to go to InLab 18. So after we scan in the chair side software and we continue to our model alignment, we do what? We click OK. That's going to save that 3D global positioning data in DXD or STL type format. But understand it's important what type of file we're going to be exporting. If we want to use a DXD, we have to export to the InLab software. If we don't mind using an STL file, say it's for something removable or orthodontics or something of that sort, or you just want to create a model, well then an STL is probably fine and we can export as an STL and take it into our third-party software. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start our in-lab application and bring in our DXD sample file to make our physical model. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go up to our import tab. We're gonna go to our desktop where we saved this file. And we're gonna go ahead and go to our sample DXD and click open. <clears throat> So InLab is a very robust software, not quite as robust as a lot of other laboratory platforms, but the nice thing is it takes our chair side scans and integrates them without any data loss, any margin loss into this software. So it gives us the ability to make models, restorations, splints, guides, export to Atlantis for custom abutments. For this, all we're gonna do is go ahead and click on model, select our upper jaw and move forward. Now, throughout this process, we have the ability to trim our models, to look underneath our mesh and make some adjustments to our mesh if we need to. Usually, I'll try to get rid of any sort of spikes or bad data in this screen. As you can see, as we rotate this closed mesh around, you can see how that base is very, very uneven, which leads to a very uneven print. Overall, we can go on to model axis and we can check to make sure that this information that we want, this three-dimensional global positioning data, comes with these models and we convert it to a model as an STL file. Now, before I go forward, it's going to ask me if I'd like to go to InLab 18 right now. I don't want to because I want to make some editing changes to these models, especially let's focus on the mandibular arch. So we're going to go down to our edit function under edit model to our cut tool at the top right hand side and remove all of this bad data. When you have this floating data or tongue space, it's a lot easier to cut it out of the model now than it would be when we go to create model. If we look at the upper jaw, we can make all of the adjustments to the upper jaw in the model function under create model. Um, but let's make this big kind of piece of tongue and isolate go away. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the cut tool up in the top of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of it and move on. And we'll talk about that when we get to the next slide. So now we're going to go ahead and use the double left click. And we're going to show you how to trim out a large area on this mandibular model. Even though we're just only going to do the maxillary model, I think this is a good opportunity to show you 
how we can use this cut function very early on in the edit model phase prior to going on to create model. So as we start this video, you can see that we're just double left clicking to start, single left clicking to save our progress. And you can see I accidentally deleted the model. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start by double left clicking, single clicking to track my progress around, double left click to close, and then we're gonna go ahead and click apply. We're gonna get rid of that little area of the model. And now you can see it doesn't mess with our model axis. It leaves everything the same. And now we're gonna go ahead and create our model. So now moving forward, this is going to take us into this in-lab model application. So you can see it's very robust. We can add supports, we can create dyes, we can create gingival masks. And overall, it's a very, very robust model software. So we're gonna first load our model in and prepare it. You can see here that our model is now converted to essentially a black and white or a monochromatic type of model. We can import an STL into this phase as well. I find that my surface detail is higher when we just import a DXD and go through the Serona software workflow as opposed to just importing an STL model at this point. So we're gonna get rid of the mandibular model and you can see as we go back, we're gonna rotate this model and you can see this opening inside the model. I'm double clicking to start and single clicking to work my way across. And this is with the left click button. And what I'm doing is straightening on this line. Anything below this line is going to just in, is going to keep our model. Anything above this line is where we're going to create our new model height and our new base expansion. So that was a double click to start, single click to save our progress, and then double click to end. Now here's a good example of what a mesh looks like. This mesh is actually applying this physical point of the surface of our teeth. Now the inside and outside of the mesh actually exist at the same point. So this is why, and this is the whole theory on how we can take an, a scan of an impression, we can invert that scan of the impression and have no distortion because that point on the mesh where the inside and the outside meet is actually the same point. So that's why we look at the title of this, a theoretical model to a physical model, because that point has to be filled in and then we have to create a new hollow point if we want something that we can physically print. If we were to go take this mesh to an STL, it wouldn't be a printable file. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to finish editing this line back. The smoother we can make this, the quicker it's gonna make the processing on our computer. It's gonna have less calculations it has to do and it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to create a model. It's also gonna create a model that has less print distortion on it as well and is easier for you to create your thermoplastic material. Now from here, we're gonna adjust our model height to around four millimeters and our base expansion is gonna be very, very minimal. When we look at a base expansion, what we wanna make sure is we don't want it impeding the vacuum form or the Biostar machine. So from here, we click apply and we will go on to the next phase of our model creation, which is going to be adding our vertical print supports and then hollowing our models. So the next phase of our model production is going to be taking a hollow mesh, creating a solid model, and then adding a vertical print base. So what you can see here is that as we rotate this mesh, we're going to actually get our physical model base. Now this physical model base is important because that model axis is going to be parallel to horizontal. So however we set our model axis is how it's gonna create this base. But overall, we took a mesh and we've now filled in that mesh and created what is now a printable exportable model. The nice thing is we can skip die creation, skip gingival mass creation, and move right on to our supports. So what we're going to do is not add a connector, but we're actually going to go ahead and add a bar to the heel of our model. 
So this is pretty neat. This is something that you can do in Mesh Mixer. This is something that you can do in Blue Sky Bio. But in my opinion, this is the easiest function to do in this software. And if you have InLab, I would much rather use InLab to adjust my bar width, my bar height, and my bar position than using something like uh, the orthodontic module in Blue Sky. So you can see here, I'm adjusting my bar width. I can adjust it down to something very thin and my bar height about equal to the base of my model. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna double left click to start and then double left click to end and we want something that covers the entire heel of our model but we don't want burn through because we want this optimized for vertical printing. So what you see is we need to make that a little bit wider in order to not have burn through of our model. You can see it looks nice and thick there. Now if we make it thicker or thinner, you can see that on the opposite heel, we're getting a little bit of burn through. Now, everything looks to be in proper position and we're ready to go ahead and click next to save our bar and move on to the next function, which would be hollowing our model. Now for the final phase, you can see once the base has been added, the next thing we're going to do is hollow out this model to save our printer resin. So as this model is finalizing, you're going to see another screen appear. This next screen is going to give us a couple options. We can add text, we can export our STL file, and then once we get to that point, we can go ahead and we can carve out our model as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to carve out the model. When we carve out this model, I like to have a base thickness around two millimeters. It's gonna save us a significant amount of resin, but it's also gonna allow us to have resiliency to make it through a thermoplastic, either vacuum form or um, air pressure type uh, pressure molding. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead and click apply. It's gonna take a minute or two because this requires a lot of processing power to physically hollow out these models. So now that these models are becoming hollow, the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and take a look. Now we took that mesh, created a closed model, re-hollowed it out to save resin, and we have our vertical print base. Now you can see we have a nice flat surface to go ahead and add a text label. So again, this is very easy too. All you do is you drag your cursor around until we get into the desired location, and we type in, without clicking anything, what we want this model to say. For this being a test model, we're just going to go ahead, get our test model in, and then double click with our left click button to make sure that we save it. Now you can see this is actually a raised text, but you can also emboss it as well. I like to do a raised text um, because that'll actually show up if we wanna put it into the mouth guard, we could actually move it further down and actually put that into the actual thermoplastic material itself. From here, we can click on finalize or we can click on export as STL. We go to export as our STL. We wanna make sure we click the top left-hand side of our screen and save it to our desktop or our thumb drive to then take it to our 3D printer. So now we're gonna utilize a free software called Blue Sky Plan in order to do the exact same thing we just did in the InLab software. So going back to that original screen when we talked about exporting our files, if we're going to take a file from Serona or a Serac system to any other third-party software, what we wanna make sure that we do is we wanna make sure that we transfer that over to an STL file. So in Blue Sky, what we're planning on doing is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take that file, export it as an STL, and import it under either model editing or orthodontics. And in this case, we're gonna use the ortho software and go over to our import 
model screen. As you can tell, it talks about an STL data file. That's what we want to import in this phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click import and I'm going to import my own upper jaw, um, which you can see is in the mesh format. As you can see, there's no sort of base on this model. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. And we're going to bring this forward into our editing software. For this, again, I like to use the orthodontic module. So you can see that I've imported the maxillary jaw. And we don't have to worry about importing our opposing arch. All we're going to do is import our maxillary jaw and click continue to jaw alignment. To align our jaw, what we need to do is we need to hold the shift key while clicking with our left click mouse button. And we're going to put two points on each tooth. So one here and one here. We're gonna go ahead and start and follow the prompts on the screen all the way back. Once we get to that point, we'll go ahead and we'll click on go to left side. Once we do that, we will hold the shift key and click. And again, mark two spots on every single tooth and work our way back to that second molar. And this is where we'll stop. You don't want to stop early, as tempting as it is, because this defines how it's going to draw your model and how it's going to trim your model. So once we've marked all of our teeth, maxillary only, then we'll go ahead and we'll go on to finish marking teeth. So once we've clicked finish marking teeth, it's gonna give us the option to close our model. As you can see, we still have a mesh and we still have some bad data. In older versions of this software, this was very problematic and I would never close the model in this screen. I would only import finished closed geometry STLs into this software. This software has gotten much more robust and the modeling capabilities are much better. So at this point, even with all of this bad data, I will still close the mesh. Don't worry about hollowing the model because if we go into preferences um, under our, I believe it's our edit or our tools function, it'll actually give us the options for the orthodontic software. And what it's gonna tell us is, do we want to have hollow models? The default is that we have hollow models in the orthodontic software to save on printing resin. So even if your model appears to be solid, you can always double check on your tool panel to make sure that your model preference is set at hollow. So now that we click close model, let's go forward. Now, what you're gonna see is this tooth segmentation. If I was actually going to do orthodontic movement on my teeth, I would have to correct all of these areas here, here, and here to make sure that line is perfectly around my teeth. Because the only thing we're using the orthodontic module for is its model function and vertical print base, we're not gonna worry about our tooth segmentation and we're gonna continue directly to our model trimming. In this screen, what you can see now is it's gonna give me the ability to toggle all of these small orbs and move them around to get this base how I want it to look. So you can see, I probably want my base drawn somewhere up here, but I wanna get rid of all of this kind of bad data as much as I possibly can. So what I'm gonna do is left click and we'll drag these little balls up to get something that looks a little bit more like this. This nice kind of straight line that we see getting rid of a lot of this bad data. Overall, again, don't worry about these lines at our free gingival margin. Don't worry about the color of the teeth because we're not worried about orthodontic movement. We're just using the trim function and then we're gonna continue to moving teeth even though we're not going to move the teeth. Like I said in an earlier video, 
when we use the CIRAC Ortho software for, for a full arch scan, we can skip over tooth segmentation and tooth movement and go right to the export phase. Blue Sky makes you physically click through every screen to get to our export phase. So you can see here that my model appears to be closed. If we actually look at this model and export it into our 3D printing software, this base right here will not show up. This base will be a series of cross hatches with a closed model. And that's just because of what I have set under my preferences screen. So again, we're not going to move the teeth. We're just going to continue on past this tooth movement screen. Now in this screen here, you can see it's giving me all these options to move my teeth. Don't do it. Just go to the bottom of the screen and click on continue to edit steps. Once we've clicked there, you'll see something else shows up the bottom right hand side of your screen that says continue to add buttons. We are going to click on that and keep moving forward. Now, we're not going to add any orthodontic buttons at this phase, so we're going to continue on to export. So we are going to click on the continue to export button. Now, this is when we look at this patient, which is myself, this is where we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our label for our patient. Now, in this software, under preferences, I have the aligner number set in my preferences to show up underneath my label tools. So as you can see, my label text currently is anonymous patient. We will change that. And what we can do is toggle the size of our model with our center scroll button on our mouse, and we can move the model until we get our text in the proper location. So when I change this to my last name and click apply, you'll see that my name shows up at the top of the model and you'll see the number one shows underneath. It's going to give you a warning that says hollow model checkbox is marked. Because my model is hollow, I do have an embossed label. It's not engraved. So it's gonna show up even though I've got a hollow model. You have to always watch with engraved models and them being hollow if you create some sort of an STL error. So I like to emboss any text. I don't like to engrave text. And you can edit that right over here. And you can see that my text label is changed right here. I'm gonna click OK, because I really don't care. We've already clicked Apply. And let's move on to the next screen. Now, my label is on my model. I'm going to go to the heel of my model and I'm going to right click with my mouse and I'm going to click on this add platform button and we will check that button. From there, you'll get this platform that appears with these global positioning tools here and here. I like to rotate this base so the widest part of the base is touching my printer bed. So this part right here, which usually means I have to grab this yellow line and I have to rotate it in this global direction. I also like to put it at a little bit more of an angle, which is one nice thing about this orthodontic software is we have the ability to play with this bar or vertical print bar a little bit more than we do in the CIRAC in-lab software. So I can angle this at 10 or 15 or 20 degrees where in our CIRAC software, it really all depends overall at the horizontal plane of our model, and our models tend to be a little bit more vertical. So that is one downside to the ortho software, sorry, to the in-lab software over this orthodontic software. Now, a really cool function here is we can save resin even further by separating our build platforms. And you can see, that all of this resin isn't necessary. We only need this base here and this base here. So overall, on the next screen, you will see that I have met all of the criteria that I want. I have an almost vertical print by our vertical print bed. 
I am off my 90 degree angle, which is going to give me less error in my anterior and posterior regions. And I also have a labeled model that is embossed, not engraved. Overall, it takes a little bit longer to work through your models in the ortho software. And it is $12.50 to export this model. So typically, in the military system, if we have the ability to use in-lab software, try to use in-lab because it's already been paid for and exports are free. If the only option you have is Blue Sky, that's fine, but just be aware that in order for you to export, you need to have available exports. Now, because this is my own personal version, I have eight, um, but we do have some for our clinic, and at our clinic, we have a couple hundred exports. So, is it worth $12.50 to export the model? Um, I definitely think it is. It definitely saves you time, especially if you already have a full arch scan. The nice thing is you could send an email of this STL file to your patient. They could keep it in their military email um, in case they ever need a retainer or hard night guard or anything. Again, you have a physical digital copy of that model, which be, can be converted um, easily with a 3D printer into another physical model. So as we walk through the end of this lecture, you probably noticed that my patient had some peg laterals. So Dr. Khan, who's one of our dental residents and obviously one of your classmates, if you're in the residency watching this video, um, presented on digital smile design and kind of took this concept in this case kind of through start to finish how we do the digital wax up. Uh, but overall, we were using this patient's models as an example of how to create a hollow 3D model. Um, as you can tell on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see a cross hatch pattern right over here. This is the pattern that I was talking about if this was a blue sky bio case. So obviously you can see we, we told you that in lab didn't do any sort of digital wax up. So we know that we did this case in Blue Sky software. Because of the Blue Sky software, we see this crosshatch pattern for our hollowed models. And at the very end, we take that, make a physical putty matrix, transfer it, and eventually use that as a bio copy to get our final Emax restorations on this patient. So overall, it's a very cool application for digital smile design. It's something that can be available to you in the Army Dental Clinic but it's important to understand how to use the software and from a basic level, not getting into digital smile design, how do we just actually use it to physically print a model for us to do a physical wax up? Um, and the digital wax ups will come a little bit later. But overall, each model hollowed out is gonna cost us about 33 cents. It's gonna cost us about 88 cents to a dollar for us to do a non-hollowed model. So it does a very good job of reducing our costs. And if I can produce models for 30 cents, and it really only takes me about 10 minutes to do all the processing in the laboratory, um, I don't have to worry about pouring up my impression wrong. I don't have to worry about getting a bubble in a critical area because all of those things are taken care of in the digital phase. And if we have a misprint, it's okay, we didn't lose an impression, we don't have to recall the patient, we can just start from the beginning. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing now is doing a little bit of model editing using the Mesh Mixer software. So I'm by no means an expert, but we can give you one more free option for you to actually edit your models. So what we're gonna need is a copy of Autodesk Mesh Mixer. And what I'm gonna do is just drag in my upper model. So as we drag in our upper model, it's gonna take a minute or two for it to load in. And you can see here that we have our open mesh type network. So with our open mesh network, you can see there's a few things we need to do. One thing we need to do is we need to close the mesh Another thing we need to do is to correct these areas right here and right here. 
Now, one problem with mesh mixer, and the reason I don't like to use it too often, is it can get really complex really, really fast if we have holes in our occlusal surface. Uh, Baron Grutter uh, has some great videos on how to close these areas, but I feel like that's where mesh mixer takes a little bit more of an advanced user to close all of those areas. Um, but if you have a model like this that has a relatively closed mesh, and all we have to do is level the base, add a vertical print bed, it's really pretty easy. So first we're gonna start by using the select tool. I like to start with the lasso type tool, and we're gonna right click and hold, and we're gonna move our model. We're gonna start with a left click, and we're gonna select some areas that we wanna get rid of. And don't do any double left clicks, just single left click. And now that area is selected yellow. We can go in here with our brush and we could adjust it with a brush, but I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna discard this. So overall, I'm pretty happy here. The next area I have to get rid of is right here where we have this mesh overlap. So we're gonna go back to select. This time we'll zoom in and we'll do the brush mode. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to make the brush smaller and we'll select this area right here. All right, we're gonna to go to edit and discard. Now you can see sometimes it'll leave little pieces floating like this. The easiest way to get rid of these pieces is with our lasso tool, single left click, and then edit and discard. So the areas that I like to get rid of are anywhere we have an overlap where you're looking at this plane and we see that the mesh is folded over. What that creates is it creates some unevenness on our walls in an area that's just a little bit less neat on our model. So we're gonna go ahead and discard this area here. Just get rid of this area, just to make it look a little bit more clean. Again, just make it a little bit more clean. And I wanna get rid of this one area with our mesh overlap in the corner. It really helps to have a mouse that has a left button, a right button, and a center scroll wheel. In order to move the model globally, we wanna click the center scroll wheel and hold it, and that'll drag everything down. Right click and hold will cause the model to rotate on the clicked point if you're trying to use your laptop trackpad, that can be very difficult and very frustrating. So make sure you have a really good mouse if you're trying to use, use Mesh Mixer. So the last thing we're gonna do is grab these little areas here that we don't need, select them, and then we'll go ahead to edit and discard. Now, as we look at our model, we have a pretty flat looking model. Now it doesn't matter that you see we have a spike here and we have this area right here and these little kind of jagged edges. That doesn't matter too terribly um, much. What we're gonna do next, oh, I see this one little area over here. We have a little overlap, so we're gonna get rid of this. Then what we'll actually do is we'll extrude this model out and hollow it after that. So go to the section, edit, discard. All right, so now here's our dental model. So the next action that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into edit. And you can see we have a bunch of different tools in edit. So we have things called plane cut, duplicate, transform. Um, there's many videos online that go through all of these tools. What we're gonna do is focus on just some areas uh, just to help you with just essentially basing a model 
and Holland model. Okay, so we're going to go back to this edit tool and we can talk about some of these other functions. But first, we're going to go ahead and again with our lasso tool with a single left click, we're going to select our entire model. Now, there's hot keys to do this much quicker where you can go and you can select the model by hitting certain hot keys. I've never been too good with those, so I just like to use the lasso tool and select my model that way. The next thing we're going to do after the entire model is selected, and you can see that it's orange, is we're going to go into this extrude function. What this is going to do, it's going to pull the base of our model up. And usually, although it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, we're going to do a negative offset. And what you're going to start to see is that model is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, what we're going to do, as you can see, it just extrudes the base of that model. And the next thing we're going to do, where it says end type is an offset. So what that's doing is that's taking the entire model or the entire mesh and extending it up. So you can see how that tooth, this area right here, is actually sticking out. And that's where my lateral incisor will be sticking out past the base. If we want to change that, what we can do is go into end type and click flat. And you can see how much different that looks now. I'm going to go back in one more time and I'm going to extrude this model out about as far as it'll let me extrude it. Now, if we right click and rotate, you can see we have a nice flat model. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit accept and give it a minute to process that change. All right, perfect. The next thing that we're going to do is go into our edit tool and we're going to go into what's called plane cut. Okay. So what plane cut's going to do is let me cut on one individual plane. One of the easiest ways to do this is line up our teeth on a flat plane right along here and then left click and hold and we can drag that plane where we want it to be. Now you can see I didn't have it lined up perfectly. So again, we're going to line up our teeth on a plane. I'm going to grab that again. Let's try the same thing. Now, if we keep getting off like this, another easy way to do this is to grab it. You can see we have a nice model that's solid. So if you want a solid model that you're going to print flat, you do your plane cut and leave it just like so. What we want to do first, though, is we want to hollow our model. So if we just do the plane cut right now, we're going to have a solid model that's nice and flat to our occlusal plane. We're going to go ahead and hit cancel, and we're going to go ahead and make hollow. Now, what I find if we're going to do a thermoplastic type material is I actually want my model to be about two millimeters thick. So that's what we have set up here is our offset distance at two millimeters. And we'll go ahead and we'll hit accept. You can adjust that down and make the model thinner if you'd like. But I find two millimeters gives me enough edge strength so my model doesn't crush under a thermoplastic material like a orthodontic aligner or an athletic mouth guard. So now we're going to go back and we'll do our plane cut one more time. Now you can see here what it's telling me is it would actually cut off all of our teeth. So there's two ways that we can do this. We drew the line last time to make our plane cut how we want. Or we can grab these global positioning tools and we can rotate it 180 degrees. And the further we move out from that center area, the slower our adjustment will be. All right, so we'll get it about 180 degrees and we'll let it go. We'll go ahead and use our global positioning tool. And now you see we have a nice hollow model. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll hit accept. And now you can see we have a model that's been filled in. We have it hollowed out. The only thing we need to do, a vertical base. So to add our vertical base, I'm going to drag it in here and we're going to click append. And now you can see we have a base, we have our model, and we have our object browser. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take our object browser and I'm going to get rid of it for now. All right. So what I want to do is I'm first going to hit select. We're going to do lasso. And if you see in the object browser, I only have one object selected right now. So it's that one. So don't worry that they're overlapped. It's not a huge deal. But what I talked about earlier were some of these tools. And we're going to use the transform tool at this point right now. We're going to go ahead and take this in a three-dimensional direction. We're actually going to move this base with our transform tool. And we're actually going to put it right on our model. If you watch Baron Gruder's videos, what you'll find is he actually has a couple different videos about how to transform models together, how to correct occlusal planes if your occlusal plane is off. And there's a lot of neat stuff that we can do in Mesh Mixer with articulators and with different kinds of functioning. Uh, this tool is a very, very powerful tool to use, but it's open source. So there's a lot of kind of tips and tricks that are really difficult to remember unless you're an expert at this program. So you can see it does take a little bit of time to get my model how I want it to look. Now we do want to transform this to be a little bit thicker. So we're going to go ahead and let's make this come out just a little bit here. To rotate ever so slightly. There we go. Perfect. So now you can see we have a model base attached to our model. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult for us to actually add our words onto our model, so we're not going to do that. All we're going to do now is we're going to take both of our objects and we're going to put them together. So we'll go back into view. We'll go back into our object browser. We're going to hit shift and we're going to select both objects and we're going to click combine. Now we've combined both objects. We can go back into our edit function and we could transform them and we could put that to have more of a vertically aligned print. So when we go to put this into our 3D printer, we won't have to do a whole lot of adjustment to it. So overall, I can export the model just like this. Now, one thing you'll have to look out for is if we're going to create a series of clear liners and you want to add the base first before you put it into your 3D printing software, you're going to want to go ahead and add the base without doing this transform function because then that's going to throw off how this would actually go into your orthodontic software. If you want to just add a base for vertical printing, this is a pretty easy way to do it. It's free. And all we do is hit File, Export, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it on our desktop. And we're going to put it as our vertical print. Okay. So now what we're going to open up next is our 3D printing software, chi box I'm going to drag that over here. All right. Now, if we look at our vertical print, we drag this in. Here is our 3D model ready to be printed. So if we go and look at our slice settings, 
This model cost 31 cents to print. And overall, we have a very nice, easy way to print a vertical model free of charge. So in conclusion, uh, you can see that we can export from Serif Ortho 1.2 or Serif Chairside after a model axis has been set. We've talked about a couple different options that you can use, whether it's uh, editing the model axis once you get into your model software, editing your model axis once you get into InLab, or using the transform feature in Mesh Mixer. These are all different options that we have, but ideally we're going to set that model axis in our scanning software because that's less room for error. Understand that DXD is used when we're staying inside the CIRAC network and STL export is to be used when we're going through to different types of software that are third party. And hopefully you see a good basic tutorial of how to use three different software platforms that are available for making 3D printable models, all at different price points from a very expensive software to a free software that charges for exports to a totally free software that just requires a little bit more time uh, to get the hang of, but is 100% free. All of these softwares are available to you to use within the military, um, and they're all good tools to have. And I think as we go forward with digital impressions, this is just one more tool to have in your bag of tricks to be able to actually take a physical um, model and convert it from a theoretical scan. So overall, hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and good luck printing your three-dimensional models.